This morning, I want to uh, thank Jessica for the scripture reading and want to take you there to Matthew chapter 14. It's one of my favorite Bible stories and we've read these stories as a child as, as well. But there's, I think, something that we can always learn when we read these stories. And you need to keep in mind that these are stories that actually happened. These are not Bible stories and just tales to entertain a child so he can go to sleep at night in his bedtime stories. These are stories that actually happened in history, in real life. Here, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. The Bible says, immediately, after, immediately, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he set the multitude away, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on a mountain by himself, and what did he do? He prayed. And when, every, and when evening had come, he was there alone. He spent time with his father in communion with prayer. And it says, verse 24, But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves. For the wind was what? Contrary. So here it's dark. They're in the middle of a storm. The Jesus is not with them. They're alone in the boat. Verse 25, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. I, would, I figured your reaction was going to be just like mine was. We read these stories and we think, oh, okay, yeah, Jesus walked on the sea. Have you seen anybody walk on water? I haven't. Jesus walked on the sea, friends. Amen. 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 They should. And so then they continue saying, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were what? Wouldn't you be? How many here would say, oh, that's Jesus. Come on, Jesus. We're waiting for you. No. They were troubled. They were scared, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. They cried out in fear. Friends, I don't know, just imagine you yourself in a boat and you see somebody walking on the water. Or forget that, just being outside and you see somebody walking up in the air. Would you be troubled? I would be troubled. I'd be fearful. Have you seen, sometimes I've seen those videos of those um, entertainers or, or um, I'm not sure what they're called, but, but, or magicians may, may, maybe, that they do tricks on the street with the cards, you know, and they have the card move here and move there and it's disappeared and it, and, and it ends up being in, in their pocket or something like that. And some of those tricks are, are, are tricks really fast that there's a trick behind it. But sometimes, I don't know if you've seen those tricks that they do there that you're like, wait a minute, no, 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 no. There's an evil spirit going on here. The trick is just too weird, too, too fearful, too troubling. And here the disciples, they know, no, that's no trick. So they were scared and troubled. Somebody is walking on the water. And not just on the water, but walking toward them. I would be more than fearful. I would be more than fearful. I don't know if I should put on my jacket and start heading, jumping outside or, or what. But here they are scared because there's a man coming to them. There's a man coming to them. And notice verse 26 there and 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them. He knew. Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Amen. 
Jesus knew that they were fearful, and right away it says, immediately Jesus said, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Friends, when you find yourself in the crisis, in the storm, and you're troubled or you're stressed, Jesus is calm. And Jesus says, be not afraid, it is me. It is me. Your life or your family is going through crisis and everything is disturbed. Jesus is calm. You, you remember that, that story where they get out of the boat and there's a demoniac, a, a demon-possessed man that comes raging toward them. You know, I've considered imitating what that would look like, but I know I would look like a complete fool. But try to imagine a crazy man, a crazy man with those eyes that you know he's got a demon inside. There's just something so weird. And he's coming at you, not stopping, and you know he's going to attack you, jump on you, bite you, who, who knows what. And what do the, the, the disciples do? They just flee. They make a U-turn and... And Jesus, the Bible says there, he just stands still. He's calm. Not because he's showing up. No, no, no. He's calm and I can picture him raising his hand and the demon just, boom, dropping right in front of him. Here Jesus is calm in the midst of the storm and he tells them, hey, fellas, it's okay. It's just me. And I want you to keep in mind in the storms of your life, in the storms at your work, in the storms in your marriage, Jesus is calm. Jesus is calm. And then it continues there saying, and this is, this is where it gets very interesting. Verse 28. And Peter answered and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. How many of you would ask that question? You know, Peter has been known to sometimes open his mouth without thinking. In many parts in scripture, and I've wondered if this was one of those times. I can imagine, you know, maybe the disciples, what did you just say? What? He asked Jesus to go out. And maybe, you know, sometimes, at least I have, you say something and as you're saying it, you're thinking, oh, I want to take it back, but it's already too late and it's, and it's come out. I wonder if this was one of those times where Peter didn't know what what he was saying. You see, I grew up close to the, close to the beach, close to the water in, the, in Harlingen, Texas, there in the Rio Grande Valley. And the beach was maybe 25 to 30 minutes away from our home. And so going to the beach was as common as, as just going to Burleson or going to Fort Worth. You know, we went to the beach on almost every weekend during the summer times. Uh, and so, and so I am familiar with the water, very familiar with the water. Uh, if you want to go to one of the prettiest beaches in Texas, you've got to go to South Padre Island. Uh, amen, yes. Galveston is not a beach. Corpus Christi is, is, is you know, it's pretty. But South Padre Island has many things and activities for the family to do. Uh, just don't go during spring break. Okay, during spring break, it, it turns into Sodom and Gomorrah. It really does. You want to stay away during spring break. But the rest of the year, and the, and the Rio Grande Valley is hot all year, you can go during Christmas if you want to. And get in the water and enjoy the water. Now, as many times as I went to the beach and would go into the water, or go into the waves, uh, whatever activity, I never went in the water at night. Never went, even if we spend the night, maybe I might do some night fishing there with my dad, but never go into the water at night. The disciples were at night in that storm. You see, I don't know about you, but I've seen Jaws one too many times that I'm not going to jump in the water at night. Have you seen those, those videos that they made a, gl a glass bridge in a really, really high place, it may be crossing a canyon or something, and there are people fearful to cross it. And some just, you know, could care less about their life and they just cross it. I wouldn't be one of those easily to cross that bridge. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
It's got nothing to do with being chicken. I just, I just, I just value my life that, you know, crossing that bridge made out of glass, all it takes is a lady's stiletto to crack it. No, thank you. I am not on that bridge. And here, Peter says, Peter, Lord, if it's you, no, have me go out. Maybe thinking, did I just say that? And I wonder if he expected Jesus, what did he say? He says, come. He said there, come. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. I wonder if he expected Jesus to say, come. And when he heard him say, come, what he thought. I can imagine the other disciples, <laughs> now go. You know, he couldn't take it back because there were disciples there with him. You see, friends, this is the main point of today's message. There has to come a time when your faith is real. There has to come a time in your Christian walk where your faith is real. As they say, when the, when the rubber meets the road, when you step out, and check, is my foot going to sink or is it going to bounce back? And he begins to walk on water. There has to come a time when your faith is very real because it's easy to preach. You know, keep the Sabbath, the seventh day, the Sabbath day. But it's another thing to keep the Sabbath if you know that your job is on the line. If you know that maybe you... You tell your supervisors, I cannot come tomorrow, but I will be here Sunday or any other day. And you take the risk in keeping the Sabbath day holy, not knowing that when you go back to work, they might let you go. That's when the faith is real. That's when you step out, as Peter did, into the water. It's, it's easy, again, you know, to, to preach. You know, we give God's tithe and his offerings, but it's another when you get your paycheck and the first thing you do is you return God his tithe and offerings and you know because you see your balance that you're going to end up short. But you still give it. You still give it. And praying and trusting in God's promises that he will supply, friends. Following Jesus has to be real. It's not just going through the emotions or singing the songs but it has to be a real thing. You, you may not know the outcome when you step out in faith. You may not know what to expect, but there's good news. The, the good news is that if Jesus says, come, it's safe. If Jesus says, come, friends, you can be sure that it's safe to walk on water. If Jesus says to me, come on that glass bridge, come. I might test it at first, but by faith, I'm walking on that bridge. Amen. Anointing myself, I probably run to Jesus. <laughs> and embrace him, keeping my eyes on him. Amen. If Jesus says, come, friends, it, you can count that it is safe. See, I can imagine Peter checking the water and God doesn't mind us to be cautious. He, 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 does, he doesn't mind that. But he does expect us to go if he says come. He expects us to go in faith when he says come. And again, I, I can imagine here Peter trying maybe to take it back for the disciples. They are, go ahead. You open your mouth. Go for it. It's amazing on how there are people who will encourage you to do something that they're not willing to do. <laughs> but if Jesus says, come, friends, you can go to him in faith. Amen. If Jesus says, come, keep my Sabbath day, you can go to him in faith that he will supply your job, will keep your job, can God talk to your supervisor and change his mind? Absolutely. And if that's the job where God doesn't want you to be, he'll get you a better job. 
If God says, come, stop spending my offerings and my tithes, I will take care of your bills. Friends, God will provide it. If God says, come, put away the drugs and the alcohol and tobacco, I will supply and take away the need that your body is hungering it for. God, friends, when he tells us to come, he empowers us to come. He empowers us to come. Peter has to believe that he is going to stand on water. And when you walk with Jesus, you have to believe that you are going to do the impossible. That there's going to be a, a, a miracle there. And isn't the Christian walk a miracle? The Christian walk is a miracle. It's a miracle for a smoker to just quit smoking. It, it's a miracle. It's a miracle for a person to go to their supervisor after they learn about the Sabbath. And, and you see, you don't go to your supervisor and say, may I take the Sabbath off? He's going to say no. Or she's going to say no. Probably, in most cases. But you go there in faith and in kind words and say, you know, I've been studying the Bible, I've learned some Bible truths, and my heart is convicted that the, Sabbath, the, the, the seventh day is the Sabbath day, and I just can't come to work. I just can't come to work. You're not asking permission, but you're kindly letting him know, or letting her know, I can't come to work. Friends, that's a miracle. Not knowing what your supervisor is going to say, but trusting that God is smiling and says, I said, come, and I will, ha I will hold you on the water. I will hold you as you put your face on me. Whatever it is. You know, it's a miracle when people are used to a certain lifestyle, whatever it may be, friends, whatever it may be, and the people change through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Christian walk is really a walk on water. Walking by faith. Walking by by faith. Being a Christian is a walk on water and whatever God calls us to do, friends, you can be sure that it will be safe to step out when Jesus has come. Now, notice verse 30. Okay? The story doesn't end there. It says, but when he saw that the wind and was boisterous, he was afraid. So obviously, he must have paid attention to the wind and the water and the waves. And he took his eyes off Jesus and beginning to sink, he cried out saying what? Lord, Lord save me. Lord, save me. Now, Peter was a fisherman. I'm assuming Peter had, knew how to swim. But here the, the waves, the storm must have been so bad that Peter had to depend and cry out to God. Lord, save me. Save me. When he began to sink, friends, he didn't have, you know, your, your pastoral prayer. You know how sometimes when we pray at home and everything is fine and, and we pray, Father in heaven, creator of this universe, thank you very much. Peter just cried out, Lord, save me. And sometimes, friends, in your walk, in your life, you may not be in the mood or you may not have the time to come calmly and collect it and say, Lord, thank you so much for your minute. Sometimes you just kneel or put your head down and are crying and say, Lord, I need you to save me, to help me now. Sometimes you, come, you get so desperate, so desperate that you cry out to God, Lord, where are you? Help me now. Help me now. Peter cries out, Lord, save me. And what is Jesus' response? The first word there, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, verse 31, and caught him. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hands and caught him, friends. That was Jesus' response, and oh, how much we as a church should learn from that. And I'm not talking about we as a church here in Cleburne, as a church in general. Excuse me. 
as a church in general, if we could learn here from Jesus, when someone cries out for help, to immediately stretch out our hand and help them, and help them. See, when, when someone is sinking, when someone is struggling, that is not the time to ask them, well, have you studied the fundamental beliefs of this church yet? No, that is not the time to lecture them, friends. They're drowning. They're sinking. There is, a, there is a time for that. But here, Peter may be drinking some water, crying out to God. Jesus didn't ask him, well, do you believe in me first? Jesus immediately just picked up, reached out his hand and picked him up, friends. When someone is sinking, friends, what they need is a hand, compassion, and love. When somebody is sinking, and people sink in different ways, friends. In different ways. When someone is sinking, they don't need your lecture. They don't need your opinion. They just need a hand, a hug, compassion, love. When a mother is struggling, maybe with her child, she has several children, and one is just crying too much, and, and she's trying to do her best to control her children, she doesn't need turning heads. Because you see, with a turning head comes the rolling eyes. She already knows <laughs> that she needs to control the, the, the situation. Unless your, your turning head is to help her and to give her a hand and to be compassion and be considerate, friends. When a member is going through a divorce, oh, friends, when a member is going through a divorce, friends, all they need is a reaching hand of love and compassion. They don't need you to ask questions. So, are the children going to be split in custody? That's none of your business. So, are you still going to be coming to church here? So, so what? They are sinking through a crisis in their marriage. The last thing they need is your lecture or your comments. Amen. Jesus here just reached out his hand. He didn't, he didn't even tell Peter, you've been following me all this time. Why did, did you take your eyes off me? He reached out his hand and picked them up, friends. He reached out his hand and picked them up. Friends, God bless every single one of you. I know some of you have been through hard, hard trials. You've gone through divorces. You've gone through crisis in your life. And sometimes the church hasn't been that nice. But I praise the Lord. God knows who you are and I know who you are. I praise the Lord that you have stayed faithful to Him. You have faced faithful to His church. You keep coming to church. You ignore those comments. So, where are, you, where are your children? Oh, okay. You know, sometimes our comments may mean well, but they are just inappropriate. Inappropriate. And sometimes the best thing to do is just not say anything. You know, um, you've heard the expression, you know, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Don't say anything at all. So God bless for those here that have gone through hard times and yet you still remain faithful. Because God says, he who endures to the end shall be saved, friends. We're not just talking about enduring things that are going to come around the world and, and the signs, but we do at times have to endure members in the church. And God bless you. God bless you. I encourage you to continue keeping your eyes on Jesus. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. And if anybody sticks their nose where it doesn't belong, just kindly tell them, thank you, that's none of your business. <laughs> so, Jesus here stretched out his hand. He picked him up. 
And there it says, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Verse 32. How, how did they get back in the boat? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. There, when you, there, if you read the meditation, inspiration tells us that Jesus picked them up and held them by his hand, and they both walked back to the boat. Jesus could have picked them up, but he didn't. He walked with him back to the boat. He could have carried him, could have taken him by his ear, but he doesn't do that. And if Jesus doesn't do that, then we shouldn't do that either, friends. Whenever somebody sinks, whenever somebody falls down, we pick them up and by the hand we walk back together to the boat, back to the church, back to Jesus. Jesus doesn't rub it in when they're in the boat to Peter at all. He doesn't remind him about what happened in the back there. No. He just invites him to walk with him again. And so friends, we need to remember when people are sinking, when people are sinking, to hold them by the hand and lead them to Jesus. And lead them to Jesus, friends. And so here, this great story. Jesus walking on the water. Peter walking on the water. It's a message, or partly, I see. And I have two simple appeals. As long as Peter kept focus on Jesus, he was fine. He was fine. When God tells you to step out in faith and do the impossible, it's because he's going to make it possible for you. He's going to make it possible. Don't ask me how. I don't know how God does it, but he does it. God knows in advance your needs. I've shared with you before the story of how God provided in our family financial needs. He knew in advance of the needs that we were going to have, and he supplied it. And not just financially, even, even, even when I was still a student here at Southwestern, and we were very limited. You've heard the expression, I was raised in rice and beans, you know. It's, we were very limited, maybe rice and beans and half of a tortilla. And God provided several times, not just once, several times, a nice big basket with bread and food at our doorstep. With a little note from Southwestern. How did they know? I have no idea, but God did. But God did, friends. So when God tells you, come, it's safe to walk on the water, friends. It's safe to walk on the water. If God says, come, it's safe to keep the Sabbath. It's going to be safe to keep the Sabbath. Come, I'll take care of your financial needs. You just be faithful. Come, I will take care of your friends. Don't worry about that. Come and be faithful. As long as Peter kept his, his eyes focused on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. And as long as you and I remember who got you on top of the water, as long as you remember who got you on top of the water, you will continue walking on the water. As long as you keep your eyes focused. But if for some reason we turn somewhere else and we begin to sink and we cry out to God, God, praise the Lord, just reaches out and what? Pulls you back up. Praise the Lord. God doesn't say, well, we got to take this to the board meeting. <laughs> got to see if that's, you know, it's, it's three times this, this, has, this has happened. Praise the Lord, he doesn't do that, friends. God just reaches out and helps. Jesus didn't remind Peter that he had sank. He immediately helped him. And when people are sinking, friends, we need to reach out and help them. We need to reach out and help them. We need to be quiet and reach out and help them. 
unless they want to share with you their burdens, that's something different. But if not, friends, keep them in your prayers. Help them to focus on Jesus. You focus on Jesus and help them as Jesus would have helped them. So the good news, the good news in this story, two things. Jesus empowers you to walk on the water. Okay? Jesus empowers you to do what you think you can't do. Okay? You think you can't be nice to your coworker? You think you can't stop doing this particular sin? You think you can't, whatever it is, Jesus will empower you to do it. And he's telling you, come. But you need, in order for you to do it, you need to stay focused on Jesus. Stay focused on Jesus. The other thing that we saw here is that when someone falls, friends, we should reach out and help them. There is a time later to discuss, well, how can we help this person not for it to happen again? There is that time. But right at the moment, people just need to know that they can count on your help. That they can count on stop asking dumb questions. And just, just help them. Just helping them, friends. Do you think you can do that? Do you think you can do that? Amen. I hope so, friends. Jesus did it. And Jesus is our example. Jesus is our example. Jesus empowers us. And he also doesn't remind us. He doesn't rub it in when we sing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have... You know, it's bad enough that the devil rubs it in. The devil rubs it in. We don't need to add to the devil's comments on rubbing it in. We just need to lift up each other. And point them to Jesus. How does that look like, friends? How does that look like? Well, as simple as just holding their hand giving them a hug, praying with them, going to their house, giving them a gift, not asking any questions. As simple as that. And they will know that they are loved, and they will know that they are cared, but above all, they will know that they're not criticized, looked down, judged, taken to the board but they'll know that God loves them and that God's people loves them as well. Amen. Friends, one of the main reasons why people leave the church is because of that. And, and I'm not talking, well, leave, leave, leave the church in two ways. Leave the church, completely leave, leave, leave the church or leave the church and move to another church because this church wasn't too nice to them. The sad thing is, they don't realize that they're going to another church where you have the same kind of people in there. And just give it time, and they're going to do the same thing. And then they end up moving to another church. Friends, instead of having people moving church, let's just embrace them here and hold them by the hand and lead them as we ourselves are walking, keeping our eyes in Jesus. Keeping our eyes in Jesus. When you walk with somebody keeping your eyes in Jesus, you notice you're not looking at each, at each, at each other. So if I'm walking, holding somebody's hand, focusing on Jesus. Here's the picture right here. And I'm walking with somebody, focusing on Jesus. I'm not focusing that this person's skirt is too short. I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on Jesus. Jesus will take care of that. I'm not focusing that this person may still be struggling with alcohol. Or this person may be struggling with keeping the Sabbath. I'm not, I'm not looking. Because the minute I begin to look at the person, guess what? I start sinking too. Amen. But together, focusing on Jesus, focusing on Jesus, he will empower us to do the impossible, to walk on water, friends. Oh, that the church would learn this, friends. Oh, that the church will learn this, friends. Will you, will you do your best? We can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. Amen. 
who gives us the strength, friends. Friends, it's my desire and appeal that we keep our eyes focused on Jesus and help others as we pick them up and walk with others and have our eyes focused on Jesus. And Jesus will take care of the other things, friends. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you very much because you invited Peter. And sometimes, sometimes we don't know what we say, but you still invite us and you challenge us to step out in faith, to step out of our comfortness, to step out of the boat and really walk the walk and not just talk the talk. But Lord, we can only walk on water and walk the walk when we keep our eyes focusing on you because you set us on top and you will keep us on top of that as long as we stay focused on you. And when others have sunk or are sinking, Lord, help us to pick them up immediately, embracing them and remembering that we at one time too also have sunk and pointing them to Jesus Christ. Friends, Lord, thank you very much because your good and your mercies endure forever. Bless your church, not just here in Cleburne, but your church around the world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. amen.